Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by Tuckvid.com. Um, we're going to take a look at creating an animated logo in Macromedia Flash 8. And I have that finished logo right over here. I will export the movie and show you what it looks like. This is what we're going to be creating right here. Just a simple animated logo just to help you get the uh, basic understanding of animated masks. Uh, as well as, if you have Flash 8, we have some filters in there, although I'm not really going to go over covering filters. That's just one of the things that the Flash 8 specific file has. And speaking of Flash 8 specific file, you can go to the site, that's www.tutvid.com, and download this file that I'm using right here, right now. Not the finished one, though. You have to follow along and do the tutorial to get the finished product. But you can get this file, which is a Flash 8 specific file, um, Flash 8 or Flash CS3 if you're using Flash CS3. There is also a file compatible with Flash 7, uh, which is also Flash MX2004. Now, if you don't have Flash MX2004, if you're only using Flash MX, you can still follow along uh, if you have a logo or if you're trying to figure out some ideas or you need to know anything about animating a logo or you just want to see somebody animate a logo, you can do that. And that's what we're going to do here. So let's get started. I'm going to close the logo prog file. Here we have finished logo.fla, and when you get this file, you'll notice the library is full of many interesting symbols, all of which are utilized here within the file. The first thing we're going to do, though, is double click into the main symbol, which is a master symbol. When I create my flash files, I tend to, most of the time, create everything inside of one big movie clip which I usually call my master movie clip just because I like to keep everything contained and you know you sort of have an extra timeline if you decide you want to mask everything or do something like that at the last minute uh, it's very easy to do and it's just kind of a habit I've gotten into so we're gonna double click here on this movie clip if I open the properties pa panel excuse me you will see that it's called master clip MC so I'm just gonna double click into it we have several layers here. We have a mask, we have the shine, we have the O plus the dust, and we also have just the type. So the first thing we need to do is draw some masks to animate these letters, make it look like these letters are just basically rolling out onto our stage here. So we need to draw a few masks. Let's double click to get inside of this movie clip, which you can see is called text copy. I'm going to double click, and we're now inside of that. Now inside of this, we have what's our instance name, excuse me, is text MC, which is basically just text movie clip. And there also is another movie clip here, if I can get a hold of it. It's just the very narrow stroke, which I can't select, it's so small. But don't worry about that, we'll get to that in just a minute. For now, just select the text MC movie clip and double click on that and you will end up inside of that. And you can see this is just raw uh, path shapes here, just these raw shapes which are our letters. What we need to do is convert each one of these letters to its own symbol. We're going to use movie clips. So we're going to convert the P here into a movie clip symbol. I'm going to hit F8 which is the hotkey to convert to a symbol and we're going to select movie clip and I'm just going to call this uh, or no I'm going to give it I'm going to start it out with underscore and I'm just going to say PMC the reason I'm starting it out with underscore is because I want all of my letters to appear in the same place in my library so if I need to use them later on for any number of things they will all be in the same place in my library and you'll see exactly what I mean in just a minute if you don't understand what I'm saying hit OK and you can see that is now a movie clip let's select the I and do the same thing. We're just saying underscore I M C. Hit enter. And let's select the X. Hit F8. Underscore X M C. And select the E. By the way, if the hotkey F8 is not working for you, I should have pointed this out when we first started. Go up to modify, convert to symbol. Same exact thing. E, whoops, underscore E, M, C, hit enter to commit that. Select the L, hit F8, underscore L, M, C, 
select the B, F8, underscore B, MC, select the S, underscore S, and we're going to say underscore S1 because we want this to be its own movie clip, MC, the reason I'm saying S1 is there are two S's, underscore S2, MC, enter. Now, you can see because I put a underscore before each of my letter movie clips, they all appear in the same area in my library. That way they're not scattered all through. So if I need, let's say the P, I can just come up here to the top and I know P is going to be the second letter in the name, not the first. So it makes it much easier to find them. Now drag a selection over all of your letters. So you select them all. I'm just using the selection tool. I just clicked up here and just dragged over all of my letters. Now right click those letters and hit distribute to layers. You're going to see here up in the timeline all of our letters are now on their own layers. That's exactly what we want because we want to be able to apply a different mask to every layer and animate it. You can see up here layer 1 is blank. We can just drag that down to the garbage can. Get rid of that. We've got S2, S1, B, P, all of that. And you can see we can shut off individual layers now. Wonderful. Select P and click the insert layer button to insert a new layer right above it. Name that layer mask. We're actually going to do this to all of these layers, but let's just take care of this layer first to get it out of the way so you can see what we are going to do here. Let's grab the rectangle tool here and I'm going to zoom in on the P because that's the letter we're going to start with. Here we've got our mask. Make sure you have the mask layer selected. Draw out a rectangle. You're going to want to pick a color just that you can see. The color really does not matter as long as it's something you can see. So in this case, we're going to take this bright green because that's highly visible. And I'm going to create a thin rectangle that's a little bit wider than the P. Okay, if you don't get it quite wide enough, click on the free transform tool and make it a little wider. We can always adjust the width later when we get to the other letters. Don't worry about that right now. But just select that shape once you have created it. Got it selected I'm using my selection tool. Come up here to modify and convert this to a symbol. We're going to convert this to a movie clip symbol and we're going to name this Masker MC. The reason I'm going to name it Masker is because this is going to be the movie clip that we're going to use to mask all of our letters, um, each on its own layer. You're going to see how we're going to do that in just a minute. But for now, select out here on frame 10, click and drag to select the frames for your P layer and your mask layer and hit F6 or you can right click and hit insert keyframe both do the same thing F6 is just the hotkey it's a little bit faster that's usually what I do now what we're going to do is select the keyframe on frame 10 if you know how to motion tween you're going to see exactly what I'm doing here then we're going to grab the free transform tool and I'm going to click on this handle the handle on the bottom of the shape right in the middle and I'm going to drag down now, if you're following along, notice that when I'm dragging down, it's dragging down and up. Okay, you can see the shape got bigger, it went up and down. To stop that, just hold down the Alt key, or if you're using a Mac, the Option key. And just drag it straight down till we're just a little beyond the bottom of the P. You can see that the entire letter is now covered by this green rectangle. It looks terrible, but it's exactly what we want. We're going to select in between frames 1 and frames 10. This is all in the mask layer. Select one of the frames in the middle, it doesn't matter which one, right click and hit create motion tween. Okay, if I start here at frame one and I just click and drag out to frame 10, you can see it's like this window blind opening and closing. All right, the next thing I need to do is select the, ma the mask layer, right click on it and hit mask. Okay. Now, when I come back here to frame one and I click and drag, you can see that it reveals the letter. It's exactly what I want. That's wonderful. Okay, so let's quickly do this for the rest of these layers. I'm going to do it for a few more of them, then I will pause the recording, finish them, and hopefully you will pause the recording as well and finish them, and then we'll get on with doing the rest of this. So here we go. I, I'm going to create a new layer, name it Mask. I'm going to click out here at frame 10, hit F6, give myself a couple keyframes. Now here, I'm just going to come into my library, click the Master Movie Clip, and drag it out. I'm actually going to start this one at the bottom instead of the top. Well, then the Alt key, 
if it wants to shrink both sides of your shape. And I'm going to hold down the Alt key again, or Option if I'm on the Mac, and I'm going to select that keyframe, and I'm going to click and drag over to 10. That just duplicates the keyframe. If you do any work in Photoshop, or even if you're just duplicating objects here in Flash, when you click on something and you hold down Alt and drag it, it usually copies whatever you're clicking and dragging. Same thing applies here up in the timeline. If you click a keyframe and you Alt click it and hold Alt and drag and then let go, you're going to duplicate that keyframe. So that's exactly what we've done here out on frame 10. I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm going to drag this up to reveal the entire eye. I'm going to right click in between those keyframes, create that motion tween. And actually, what I'm going to do here is highlight this entire area and drag this out so it goes from frame 10 to frame 20. Actually, I'm going to make it go from frame 5 to frame 15. I'm going to select those few frames, right click, hit remove frames to clear the extra frames off. And now select that mask layer, right click, and hit mask. Now if we start at frame 1 and drag it out, you're going to see frame, or the P letter starts coming. And before the P letter finishes, the I starts filling up as well. One thing you want to make sure you do is keep including frames underneath because you can see here as soon as we get to frame 10 we have the P there when we go to frame 11 it disappears it's because there's nothing there on the timeline so just select out here and hit F5 or insert frame same exact thing once again and there you go it's still there so let's do it to X I'm just going to sort of show you the whole process here that masker. Once again, I'm going to come from the top, drag it out, make it a little wider, hold down the Alt, drag that out. Now I'm going to drag my shape down, right click, create my motion tween. I'm just going to select and cut off those extra frames there. We'll get back to that in a second. And I'm going to right click on my mask layer and hit mask. I'm going to click and drag, select all of those layers and make them go from frame 10 to frame 20. There we go. So now we have our letters going all the way out. And once again, I'm going to select underneath and just hit F5 to make sure I'm filling out and keeping my letters moving across the timeline as I move across it. All right, let's do it to the E. Mask. Select frames 10. Hit F6. Come back to the mask layer. Drag out our masking movie clip. Hold down Alt. Duplicate it to the 10th frame, stretch it up to the top, right click, create our motion tween. Let's cut off our additional frames. Right click on the mask layer, hit mask, and drag this out to the 15, and we're going to go from 15 to 25 here. Actually, it's going to be just before 25. I need to cut this back just a little bit like that. Okay, so now we have our letters filling in perfectly staggered once again remember to keep underneath your animations or your motion tweens keep all of those frames filled in so none of our letters disappear you're gonna see it's gonna be this alternating letters appearing effect alright so I am going to pause this recording I'm gonna finish doing this when I come back I'll just quickly run over what I did I don't want to bore you even though I'm sure it's been incredibly boring watching me do those four but hopefully you're getting the hang of it and you'll be able to handle doing the last few letters. So I'll be back in just a second. Okay, I'm back. Here we go. I have finished creating the masking effect. And you can see it's sort of like the steps of motion tweening we have here in Flash. Go all the way up through the roof of Flash here. And if I click on frame one here and I can just hit the enter key and it will show me what's happening. And you can see it plays through the timeline and looks pretty good. I can also hit Control or Command Enter to publish the movie and view it at 100% size. And it just keeps replaying because I don't have anything telling it to stop. That reminds me, we need to add a stop action. Insert a new layer. Name the layer AS. Select frame 44 in this case, which is the last frame. It doesn't have to be specifically 44. If you're up to frame 45, select frame 45. Frame 46, select frame 46. Or if you're frame 44, you can select frame 44. You just need to select the last frame. Oh, that was awkward. Uh, now come here to Window Actions. And we have the Actions palette appearing. And we just need to place a stop action, which is simply the word stop, and open and close parenthesis, and 
Semicolon. Hit F9. That's the hotkey to toggle the actions palette, or panel, as they call them here in Flash, on and off. F9. Okay, so we've got a stop action. Now, if I export and watch the movie, it's only going to play through this animation once, and it's going to stay there. It's pretty much how we want it to be with the logo. We want it to kind of build itself and then just stay where it is so you can read the logo and you don't have to continually watch it remaking itself. All right, come back, click on text copy here at the very top of your screen. We have scene one, master clip, and it's showing basically the hierarchy of all of the movie clips that we're working in, and we're all the way here inside of text MC. I want to go back to text copy. Here in text copy, we have our stroke. You can see I'm selecting the stroke now. If I look at the properties palette, you can see that this is an instance of stroke. I want to right click on this and hit distribute to layers. You can see I now have a layer called stroke and on that layer is my stroke. How convenient. I want to drag out frames to frame 44 because that's what we had before. We go up to frame 44 with our animation here inside logo. So I'm just going to hit F5, I've got 44 frames. and. I am going to drag the first keyframe of our stroke out here to about frame 25. I'm going to hold in Alt and duplicate the frame all the way out to about 44 or whatever the last frame is. I'm not going to go through that whole thing again. Right click and hit Motion Tween. And over here, we're going to select the stroke. I'm going to make my timeline a little smaller. We will reduce the alpha to zero and the alpha is 35 there. So you're going to see the stroke will just kind of fade in nicely. And also for this timeline, we just want to create a new layer, name that layer AS, and place a stop action at the end of this as well. So we don't have our stroke animation continually replaying itself through the logo. All right, so we have our stroke made. Now, one of the things I want to do, by the way, click on Master Clip MC here to go back out to the Master Clip. You can see that our text is gone. And you can actually unlock the Shine layer, select the Shine, and just reduce that to zero for now. We'll get back to that in a few minutes. We're going to mess around with the O and the dust. We're going to make this dust sparkle, and then we're going to make this O almost look like it's you know coming out of whatever's behind here, just kind of unfurling as well. We're going to use another animated mask to do that. So let's take a look at that right now. This is going to be a little confusing, so if I completely lose you, I don't know, hit the pause button and try desperately to understand what I'm trying to explain. It shouldn't be too, too difficult, but it's pretty complicated. Double click here into this instance. It's the instance of O. It's the name of the movie clip. It's right here on the O plus dust layer. I'm just going to double click it to get inside of it. In here I have two logos. That's pixels falling and the O. I want to mess around with the pixels falling. By the way, if you're not using Flash 8, you don't have this glow underneath because that's one of the filters which are new to Flash 8. Uh, Flash 8 or Flash CS3, I should mention. Double click inside of the pixels falling movie clip. And in here, we have five more layers. We have dust one, dust two, dust three, dust four, and dust five. And all together, those five dust layers make up all of our sparkles. So let's mess around with dust one to start. Now this is where it gets a little complicated. What I'm going to do is zoom in on this first so you can see exactly what I'm doing to shrink my timeline a little bit. Whoops, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Zoom in just like that. Now you can see the entire Falling Pixels artwork. Here I've got Dust1 selected. I am going to hold down the Alt key, click and drag, and drag a keyframe to the third frame. So now I have a keyframe on frame 1, and I've got a keyframe on frame 3. And in between there's one blank layer. I just have that there just for the sake of timing because what we're going to do is select this movie clip, Dust1. You can see it's an instance of Dust1. You actually have to click on it to get the color options here in your properties panel. By the way, in here is where you've got your alpha settings. I'm worried though about the brightness settings. I'm going to jack the brightness of this up to about 70%, almost white. 
Now I'm going to go back and here on frame one, we have our full orange keyframe. I'm going to alt drag that to frame five. So once again, we have one frame between our orange, black frame, becomes light, black frame, goes back to orange. Now I'm going to select the black or the white keyframe. I'm going to drag that to frame seven. Now I'm going to select the orange. I'm going to drag that to frame nine. Now I'm going to drag select the white and drag that to frame 11. So what we have happening is basically these little sparkles are going to be flashing from orange to very light orange, extremely light orange, and then flashing back. So let's lock up dust one layer and let's do the same thing with dust two. Just with dust two, I'm going to alt drag to frame three, just like we did before. But this time I'm going to select the dust on frame one. And in order to select this because there's so much, just click and drag over it. All the rest of the layers are locked, so you don't have to worry about accidentally selecting any of those other movie clips. In the color area, select brightness, and we'll bring this up to about 65%. And we're going to alt drag this out to frame 5. So you can see we go light to dark to light. So we're going to dra drag the dark layer out to 7, select the light one, and alternate. And basically, we're just leapfrogging these, going light over dark, and then dark over light. So it's going to flash dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, or light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. Okay? Hopefully I haven't completely confused you. I'm going to lock up dust two layer and if I just drag my playhead you're going to see that it's just flashing back and forth. It's a pretty simple concept. I'm going to select dust three. I'm going to alt drag it over. Now here I'm going to select this. Go to brightness and we're going to bring this up to about 50%. I'm going to select frame one, drag that over to five, select frame three, drag that up to whoops to seven, select frame five, drag that up to nine, select frame seven, drag that to eleven. Boy, that sounds complicated. Lock that layer, unlock dust four, and alt drag to frame three. Select frame one. Make sure you click and drag and select the actual movie clip. We're gonna bring the brightness of this up to about fifty-five. And we're going to alt drag, leapfrog over to five. We're going to select keyframe that's on frame three, leapfrog that up to seven, go five up to nine, and finally seven to eleven. And we can lock that layer up. And now we're just going to grab dust five, and I'm going to alt drag that over to frame three here. And I forget now what I did on frame one. Okay, those are light, so these stay dark dark on frame one and we're gonna make them lighter on frame three bring this brightness up to about sixty percent and we're gonna leapfrog one over to five three to seven whoops five to nine and seven up to eleven just like that and we have now created this pretty intense sparkling effect but it's pretty uniform. Matter of fact, if I were to save this and publish it, we can see that it looks kind of just, you know, you can just tell it's repeating itself. So we really need to mix it up a little bit. So let's do that right now. I'm going to select the entire thing, right? I just clicked on this keyframe in the bottom right hand corner and just dragged up to the top left hand corner. Hold down the Alt key, click and drag and move it over and drop it so that we have, make sure you leave a frame in between. So we don't have our timing messed up. So we've got all this equal timing. But now we're going to go ahead and we're going to mess the timing up. So I'm going to select anywhere on any of these. And I'm just going to hit F5 just to throw in a couple extra frames here and there and really mess with the timing. Okay, it really doesn't matter where you put them. They can go anywhere. The whole point is just to really mix up the timing so it all looks different. Instead of all looking uniform and all looking the same, we want everything to be happening at a different time. Now select all of these last frames, hit F5. Any frames that stick out, just hit remove frames. Now we're going to do one last thing to completely mix this up, and that's select this entire thing and duplicate the entire thing again. Do not deselect those frames though that you're holding. Okay, you can see it still has them selected. Here's a little trick. Right click and hit reverse frames. Okay, so we have basically the same thing happening in reverse. So it's really going to throw it off. You're never going to be able to tell when this thing is looping. So we're going to save it, and now when we view it, it looks much more like it's just sparkling and not like it's doing some animation and just continually looping, which is what it's really doing. So if you weren't totally confused by that, and 
certainly if you're not daunted by the way this looks. That's a really easy and quick way, much quicker than me just explaining it, obviously, once you know how to do it. You'll be able to blow through that and make virtually anything sparkle in, you know, a minute or two. Let's come back out here to the O. Uh, actually, let's go back to the master clip. Now, what we need to do is make this entire O and sparkling trail unmask and uncover itself, go from being hidden to show as our type unfurls itself. We need to create a mask, so that will require us creating yet another layer. Hit insert layer. We're going to name this one mask. And we're going to drag our frames out to frame 45. We're going to hit F6. It's going to place a bunch of keyframes out there. Now over here on the mask layer, I'm just going to select the mask. We're going to use the oval tool and I'm going to draw a circle right up here. Okay, try to position it right where I have it positioned because we're going to use a little shape tweening here and shape tweening is a little more posi position specific and regardless of what you do, you're probably not going to get the same exact tween as me. It may even take you having to play around with it for a little bit, but shape tweening is very easy to do and you'll very quickly learn how you can easily tweak the way your shape tween tweens and looks and everything else. I'm going to hold in the alt key and duplicate this keyframe out to key uh, frame 10, excuse me, and I'm going to duplicate it again out to frame 40. Now on frame 40, I'm going to use my selection tool. I'm going to deselect the oval, and I'm going to move my cursor to the edge of the oval, and you're going to see that you don't have the selection square next to your cursor anymore. You have this little curve. Click and drag, and you can stretch the oval out. That's exactly what I want to do. And I'm just going to select another edge, and I'm just going to drag it out. I just want this oval to unmask the entire O that we have here. So it's going to go from this little circle here to this blob. Just select one of the frames in the middle and come down here into the properties panel. You can't just right click and hit motion tween because this is not a motion tween. This is a shape tween. So you have to hit shape tween. And you can see we're going to have this nice sort of arcing effect and this mask is going to uncover our box. I'm going to right click on this mask layer and hit mask. We can preview it here and you can see what happens just like that. Pretty good. Now the last thing we need to do is come over here up into the shine layer. Let's come back to the shine layer. On frame 40 hit F6. That will insert a keyframe. This is on the shine layer. And we also have our keyframe out here at 45. I am going to select this little plus here in the, whoops, no, we have to unlock the shine layer. That's what we need to do. And don't worry about this all of a sudden pixel boss text showing up. That is just the mask. If we hit the outline, you can see it just turns into an outline. Don't worry about it. Select the keyframe on frame 45 and select the little center knob of that movie clip. That will allow you to select it even though it's completely invisible. And you can set the alpha to, let's try 50. That looks pretty good. And here at 40, it's still zero, so we're just going to right click in between and hit create motion tween. And that's going to tween that right up to 50 for us. We can lock that back up. Now, we're going to create one new layer. We're going to name it AS for action script. Come over here to frame 45. Hit F6 to insert a keyframe. Hit F9 to open the actions palette. And type in a stop action. It's just the word stop, open and closed uh, parentheses, and a semicolon. F9 to close that up. I'm going to save this file real quick and I'm going to preview it. You can see our logo becomes uncovered, our O draws, and the shine just shows up. Just like that. Pretty cool. Watch it again. And there we go, just like that. Maybe I might want to click and drag this, maybe start the animation at frame 20 instead of 10. It's coming in a little early, so I just drag that keyframe over. There we go, that looks a bit better. Just like that. And there we go, we've animated this logo start to finish. You've got the file, you've done it, and that's how you animate a logo. Now obviously, the only thing that limits you is your imagination. When it comes to animating these logos, there's really tons of stuff you can do in Flash. Um, so just really keep messing around with stuff and just use this as a building block. Learn hopefully how to animate masks at least and <laughs> learn how to animate this logo here in Flash. 
And that's it for this one. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Please check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Tutvid.com.